the Bible says, Ought ye not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever, even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt? In the book of Leviticus, the meat offering had to have salt. He spoke of the salt of the covenant. Here, the prophet is challenging Jeroboam about the covenant of salt given to David. The book of Numbers records a covenant of salt for the priests. What is it about salt that God connects it with his covenant, with his meat offering, that offering that was about the service of his people and the service we would picture in Christ? Well, salt first is there to give life, to preserve life. And God's covenant is having salt as a part of it because God's covenant, God's agreements with man are meant to preserve life. They're meant to bring life, not death, but preserve life. Secondly, the salt is meant to keep something enduring. And God's covenant of salt is to remind the priests in the book of Numbers that the agreements I've made with you continue, endure. The covenant he made with David that is called the covenant of salt is meant to show that he would have that kingdom forever. What a blessing to know today that God has made a covenant of salt with his people. An agreement for the priests and the kings to preserve life and to endure and to persevere. And in Jesus Christ, by the blood of his cross, he has made us kings and priests unto God. And the agreements that God has made with us will preserve life and will continue to endure. Let us not resist them. Let us not frustrate them. Let us not trod them underfoot. Let us not be like Lot's wife. Let us remember God's covenant of salt forever.